The other show we're going to talk about tonight is the Penguin Episode 3, Bliss. Oz and Sophia must address the skeletons in their closet as they attempt to control the future of Gotham's drug trade, while Victor is torn between his new life and what remains of his old one. Um, so this is Vic's episode. Yep. Yep, a Vic's episode. And and it dawned on me, okay, so we've had three episodes of the Penguin. Episode one, clearly the Penguins episode. Episode two, we got a lot more. And the cold open was all Sophia. Mm-hmm. And now the cold open is Vic. And mm-hmm. this episode is truly his episode. And so I like that now, fingers crossed, we've got the setup for our three central characters out of the way. Yep, yep. <laughs> so... So curious about next week, um, and and that how that'll that'll play out because um, I feel like they they have their chess pieces um, in place and then some. But my first question to you, Will, um, at what point during the cold open did you realize that we were watching the end of the Batman through Vic's perspective? Um, I think when they were so you know Vic goes. Meets his, you know, goes to his family. They have their, you know, their uh, in, inside the Spider Verse moment, in the household and stuff. Uh, and, and you know, he has the conversation where he leaves with when he, whenever he leaves the home and has a that that uh, pointed discussion with his father about ambition mm-hmm. and and all and how that ended. I was just like, oh, I get it now. This was. This was the night of the the night that the Riddler set off the bombs. It was it was in that moment whenever he whenever they were, whenever he left and how things were left with his father was when right. I realized it. Right. Well, you caught on a lot quicker than me because it was right when they started setting off the bombs. Because <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I was just. I was like, oh yay, we finally get to see Vic's Vic's family. We're we're seeing more of his story. And and I knew in the back of my mind and my subconscious, I knew that his crown point was destroyed. But for some reason I just did not put two and two together, fortunately. Um, so so I yeah, I yeah. I was but- a bit surprised, but it also it worked really well. It worked well. I will say, even though I, I, I kind you know, whenever, especially when the bombs went off and it, it confirmed my suspicions, just the the cinematography and the scale and the scope of what happened, it really contextualized more of what happened at the end of the Batman and really just it really drove it home in a more visceral way. Because when you see the floodwaters rushing in and and, and you know maybe it's just due to some real world stuff I've been dealing with here in my state. Um, but, you know, taking it back to the show, um, just seeing that, seeing the bridge and the, you know, and then coming and hitting the apartment and just wiping, you know, seeing that wiping Victor's family out. I mean, it was just that, you know, I know we both were like, you know, trying to figure out how we felt about Vic as a character. And this really like, if this was the really deepened my under starting to help me understand what 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 this character is about um mm-hmm. with you know seeing seeing things like you you know when we're seeing think the crown we, you know we, we had reference to it and we've seen all the fallout from the batman from the riddler setting off the bombs but this really drove it home in a real way with one of our lead characters uh in this show and it, you know it was it was it was it was a gut punch i mean as far as it it it, it was very what they intended for it to do to make you care more about Vic, I, I think they succeeded in that. Right, right. Um, we also, um, during that process, get introduced to his girlfriend, mm-hmm. and um, who also survives because they are together on that night at the rooftop. Yeah. And um, so later on in the episode, when when Vic does not get to be driver. Um, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. Yeah. He um, is home alone at Penguin's place. And I just love how it's not even two minutes. He immediately calls his girlfriend. I'm like, 
Yep. Wow, you are a child. <laughs> and yeah, because Bing was like, I know, I you know, I will know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, yeah, not I don't understand. Um, so so and then we get his his overall um crisis this episode, which is mm-hmm. she wants to leave and he considering his position with the penguin doesn't know really if he can just walk out um so and which leads to some really good scenes um especially um between him and oz as um this episode is really developing that father son dynamic between these two for -hmm. better and for worse for sure, yeah. I mean, you know, the the, the put the, the the bookends that they had with really with the A, you know, with with you know, clearly the, the big story was the A story in this episode, and then between the cold open, the 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 lunch that they had in a fancy restaurant while they mm-hmm. while they were you know setting up, um, um, oh gosh, what's her name, uh, Luke Luca's wife, I can't remember her name, but uh, the, the conversation that they had there, um. And you know, you know, Penguin Oz learning more about Vic's family, and you know, the whole thing about ambition, and also just their relationship too. Because like when a waiter, for example, you know, is is you know, trying to when Victor's struggling, you know, with a stutter to to place his order, you know, the protective nature of Penguin, you know, came out. Um, you know, it, it, as far as when the waiter was doing his thing and. But then when you get to the end of the episode, uh, after Vic has his panic attack um, and, and trying to uh, finally sh- share with with uh, Oz, with his, with his girlfriend waiting on the bus, uh, you know, he's trying to, you know, Oz sees the phone, the message and just how all that played out. And you see the flip side of, of Oz um, trying, you know, the manipulative nature of Oz, but also that scene with with Vic and Oz there in the, in the bathroom was just so it just worked so on so many levels from a performance standpoint because in in the same mode where um you know Oz like went back to the bullying you know putting a gun to his head like trying you know manipulation literally with you know with with threat of force um he was also still like like genuinely hurt as far as the emotion too, in in his own kind, in, in Oz's own kind of way, and just how that was all sold was just like just really, just really, you know, so many levels there uh, within that within that within that scene that um, you know really really st- stood out to me. Um, how, how you know as far as the manipulation, but also the guilt trip that he was doing, and then but also the, I think some level of hurt too because. You know, because of how well they set things up earlier in the episode with the, with the conversation that they had at at the restaurant. Yeah, I I think there's manipulation in both scenes. Oh yeah, there is. I, I mean, there's manipulation since they first encountered because, yeah. I mean, Penguin has no need for him, so he. It's it's this weird position as a viewer for me because he's technically expendable, mm-hmm. but I think the penguin also, because of his stammer, um, mm-hmm. sees something like a um, sees so much of a, a kindred spirit, yeah. and he wants to give this kid a shot, and yeah. he's really taken under his wing. Um, and so I don't know why I never think that the, I, I don't, I haven't from the get go penguin will never hurt Vic. Yeah, (laughs) he won't. The (laughs) hangman will, but, but penguin will never, um, hurt Vic, um, no matter what. And so I, I just, but I, I think that. What I what I can appreciate is that in that cold open, um, there 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 is that conversation between uh, Vic and his girlfriend yeah. looking at Gotham, the big city, and and where all the fancy people live, and yeah. you can tell in that moment 
just through his eyes that he um he aspires to live mm-hmm. there and yep. to be like make, make it there and i don't now i don't know when the heck the penguin saw that <laughs> <laughs> but that's honestly something that for one reason or another the penguin knows about and that's where he really twists it and he's really able to to use like i did it you can too Mm -hmm. just follow my lead like you you see me and they accept me so so it's just um yeah it is a twisted like uh, american pull yourselves up by the bootstrap american you know american dreams even though it's the criminal underworld (laughs) type of story there yeah it's it's, people who and we've seen the relationship between oz and his mom Mm -hmm. so the manipulation that occurs between oz and vic like it makes sense Mm -hmm. oz doesn't know any other way so And That's honestly, true. it could be worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is true. That is true. I mean, I, I mean, people, you know, people do like, you know, whatever patterns, good and bad, you pick up from your parents. It carries, you know, it does carry forward in, in your own parenting style. And, uh, and and we see that as far as, I guess, like you said, I mean, Oz is sort of has become sort of the surrogate father for, for Vic. And, and, and so that model that he that he grew up with is now what he's what he's doing to, to Vic. Right, right. And and there isn't anything wrong with wanting more. It's just yeah, the no. means of how you go about it. Right. Um and and so far technically Vic hasn't really done that much wrong. No. <laughs> I mean, he even gave a cop a thousand bucks, but yeah, the cop yeah. took it. <laughs> so, <Yep. laughs> which yeah. you could tell in that scene he's learning from his mistakes because that was good improvisation when things mm-hmm. go a little bit sideways and then yep. by the end when he literally crashes the party to ultimately save oz he he again working on the improvisation so yeah. Yeah. um yeah i think i think those the arc um was good um, a little bit of a fresh perspective yeah. And and more of an understanding of how Oz can um how and why Oz keeps Vic around. Yeah. Um and why and now more importantly by the end of episode why Vic stays. Yeah. 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 Even though his dad would not be proud of him. No, no. <laughs> Which yeah, his dad definitely would not be proud of him, but we do. But it, I think they did a great job of, like, like you said, uh, helping us understand why he sticks around. And, um, and, um, but also the other thing too is just um, why Colin Farrell is just doing such an amazing job with this character. In that, you know, thinking about that bathroom scene, he, I, I actually felt whenever, whenever the manipulation was going on. I still almost felt sorry for for I felt bad for Oz that Vic was even thinking about leaving, which is just like yeah, yeah they're making me care about the villain. <laughs> oh, but it's it's he's not the villain. He's no. the hero. He's a hero. Yeah, I have show. to remember that. Yep, this is his yeah. show. He's the hero of his story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's you 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 need to like him, and honestly, they're like yeah, like Vic, but. I wouldn't say like your alternative is liking the hag man. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> but yeah. but she Sophia is also coming into her own. Mm-hmm. Um and and I and I'm starting to really come around on her yeah. mainly because I really appreciate the the lack of clarification about the history. Yeah. Uh we we learn in this episode he used to be her driver mm-hmm. and and we still don't know the full beat for betray- beat betrayal betrayal that occurred but they were definitely close yep and 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 i i really like the conversation at the end where the like it was the first arguably real conversation where 
-hmm. Again, we had just seen him break down over Vic and, and it makes sense that he would come off or have this response. Then when Sophia finally confronts him and just said, did he get everything you wanted? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and, yep. and I also like, he's like, yeah, fuck. I did. Yep. <laughs> I did. I'm not <laughs> sorry did. for that because, yeah. because if he had, if he had said it, like it's bullshit, he isn't sorry. Yeah. Exactly. But at the same time, it's this weird thing where I I almost don't know if it's true or if I want it to be true. The mm. next line he says where he did does regret having hurt her. Yeah. And what what he did to her. And so it's like you don't regret the outcome, well duh. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's probably but, the most truthful thing he said. <laughs> yeah, the the but the means to get there was only one path, or or maybe we don't know. Maybe mm. there was an option, and maybe that's what he regrets, and that's what he was talking about. So, yeah. I, like that, the mystery of the full context of the history with these characters, mm -hmm. and how they're. Um, piece by piece, putting that together over the course of the season, I really, I really like, because that adds intrigue for me and curiosity. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I mean, that to that scene too, is just you know, to your, just to think a little bit more about it whenever, uh, again, uh, Colin Farrell, just fucking amazing because like whenever he started tearing up when he was telling Sophia that while he was still, I mean, it's just the, the, the depths of, his of, of, of the, even though like you said he doesn't regret what he got but he you know but at the same time he's you know conveying it, there seems to be something he's feeling there i don't know what the emotion is uh because he, he he's he just he feeds so many lies you just it reaches the point like you know what is the truth with this guy um, because he is a survivor, like we talked about last week with, uh, like he reminded you, he, you, you made a great call back to, uh, Yabushige from, from Shogun. Yeah. Um, you know, he will do what he needs to suit his own end. And especially we see that at the end of this episode, because when, when Vic rescue, you know, rescues them both from the Maronis, you know, he, she, he jumps in the car and Vic's like, what about, you know, there, what, what about Sophie? And Sophia, and he's just like, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so after so all, yeah, <laughs> after all that saying, he was, you know, I, you know, you got it. You can trust me and all the stuff he built up. He still reverted back to the, you know, back to that survival mode because that's what he knows. Yeah, I don't, I guess I retract that statement. I don't know if that's the smartest thing he could have done because yeah. now you have Sophia and Nadia. Mm hmm. They're, they're going to talk yep. Yep. <laughs> and neither one of them trusts. I mean, I, I, this episode, I think does a good job of putting the Maronis on the back burner mm -hmm. without the viewer even realizing it. So when Nadia appears, you're like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank God. they're actually smart. Yeah. <laughs> it also, they appear in a way where it's like, okay, thank God we're working with a lot of smart characters mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yep, not we are. characters <laughs> yeah. um, because they're all bad guys and typically bad guys are not the brightest. Right. So, so Nadia and like Oz and Vic may have gotten away, but now technically you have kind of two enemies who mm -hmm. are going to potentially make an alliance yeah. so i don't know if leaving sophia was in the best interest but at the same time it's like he's got to get away from nadia because of they were not happy which which i was right at the end of last yeah. episode nadia never got her guy back okay she never did yeah they pieced never it together did. and where the heck is that actress from okay i know i say it up but yeah. i swear to god I've seen her in so many things and I just, and she's always really good. I just, I can't place it. Yeah. I, I know I, I'm the same way too. I need to look at the IMDB, uh, 
uh, real fast just to like to place her because she she is oh yeah she's i've seen her in other stuff and she's always delivers a great performance um but uh, yeah but i agree i i um yeah, you know, oh, you're right. Okay. She was from the House of Sand and Fog. Oh, uh, okay. Way back in 2003 with, um, yeah. I believe that was with Ben Kingsley. I remember that. Mm-hmm. You've seen her in Star Trek Beyond. That's where it was. Yep. 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 I'm just, I'm just looking at this. Yeah. Yeah, she's been in a lot of different things. We watched The Flight Attendant. She was in that yeah. show. Yeah, we did watch The Flight Attendant. Yes, yeah. 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 So, yeah, but you're right. It was, was... That is, sorry, I'm just going to put yeah. this out there. This is yeah. funny. Um, 2017, there was a little show called The Punisher. She played oh. Farah Madani. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Now, that's where I know her from. Okay. Madani. I, I think she was like a police officer or something. Okay. Okay, yeah, and I know her from Star Trek. That's where I remember her from. You're right. I completely remember from Star Trek Beyond, the, the last movie in the uh, Kelvin universe. So, uh, yeah, but, uh, but you know, but uh, you're right, though. It was smart of them to put the Maronis on the back burner this episode. Uh, you know, it's because, you, know, you know, the only place where I feel like the episode kind of did drag a little bit was maybe when they were doing the whole drug trade thing in the in the club as far as what the, oh, the yeah. boys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you know that that uh, yeah, that we had to do that to just sort of establish the triads and you know get the you know get the distributors and all that kind of stuff set up. But uh, um, really, the, the the thing that stands out for me with that is just like as we discussed earlier, Vic's panic attack. You know, in the context of the larger A story, and also you know him adapting uh, whenever the uh, cop you know, showed up. Uh, but the rest of it, as far as the bliss and the drugs and stuff, you know, it, you know, we'll, you know, it definitely needed to be set up. So we'll see how all that unfolds uh, throughout the rest of the season beyond the drops. Uh, you know, with, their, with with all these fake drugs that they come up with in the DC universe. I mean, bliss sounds like something we may have heard about in Titans for, for all I know. Well, yeah. I so it, we find out it comes from Arkham, and it mm-hmm. was used on the patients. And yeah, yeah. I like how uh, little Miss Sophia is being very quiet about the exact effects of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because everyone else is like, it's a party job. And and see, even though the scene went on long and yeah, towards the end, we, we get Vic's panic attack. I thought the overall scene and orchestra- orchestration, yeah, it brought in the triad and added that extra element because there's a lot of families in Gotham who are fighting over power but it also emphasize re-emphasized more the power struggle occurring between oz and sophia yeah yeah like i i think they did a good job is that yeah these two are aligned but (laughs) they are very on very shaky terms especially because like both of them can never be like both of them can't share we're boss together like they're not partners Mm-hmm. And Sophia makes that very clear. And then I think that her speech and her ability to sell the drug, she did a very good job because we get the cold open from yep. Vic's perspective mm-hmm. of the downfall of Crown's Point yep. and the devastation. Mm-hmm. And fast forward, that's why any of these drugs will work in Gotham because there's so much devastation, people yep. need an escape from it. Yep. So it's it's leeching onto that vulnerability, which is a mm-hmm. very villainous thing to do. Yep. So it went on a bit long, but I I still think that it it served a lot of different purposes. It did. It did. You're right. I mean it was it wasn't yeah, and when I say yeah, I don't want to I agree. I mean, it wasn't that it was a waste, wasted scenes. I mean, every, everything in this show has a meaning to the larger, the larger tapestry that they're they're mm-hmm. they're, they're, they're painting here. Um, but you're right. I mean, that was um, the, the deep, the especially like when she talked about you know the crime boss for the triad, uh, his his background, 
um, and, and all, and, and knowing deeper. And then one thing too that came out, I can't remember when she and, and, and Oz, well, I did want to ask you what you thought about this when she said this, is that, that she's not the hangman. And, and what do you think she was getting at there? I, I think she said, yeah, um, that was in this episode? Yeah, yeah. When? <laughs> Um, well, it was, I guess I also need to know what he said at first. Yeah, I can't remember. It was in, I think was it right before they were going to to find out that the, the, with the mushrooms. I can't remember when it was. I, I just I, I do remember that coming up, and I was just trying trying to remember. Or was it whenever they were when she dismissed Vic from um, not being the driver that night? Maybe way at the very beginning. But I I mean I did yeah I I, I think that was as they were trying to build their alliance and and their and their the shaky trust that they have with one another. I, yeah, I know I know vaguely the line you're referring to, but yeah. without the context I can't yeah. Yeah, I don't that's really fair. have a lot to go on. Yeah, that's fair. Um, that's fair. Yeah. 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 Um all right. So um before we leave, I just want to ask you mm-hmm. so um, because you keep bringing up Colin Farrell, um, yeah. Emmy season next year, you got yeah. Colin Farrell for this, and then you got Pedro Pascal for Last of Us season two. Yeah. <laughs> but don't worry, they're going to make Pedro be a supporting actor. Yeah, they'll make him be supporting actor again, for sure. <laughs> so that to guarantee <laughs> that he's able to walk away with something. Yeah. My, my God. For real. But, but I mean, I've been thinking this whole time. I'm like, wait, wait a second. Are they both going to be nominated simultaneously? And then what do you do? Yeah. And H- yeah. Yeah. Well, HBO, yeah, HBO's got to make a choice. <laughs> well, no, it, it would make sense for Pedro. Joel is technically he's not the lead. Yeah. yeah. Like it's it's Bella's show, yeah. but it's um, but he um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but damn so. it, if if he doesn't get nominated, and they scr- they snub him like they did Patty Casadon, we riot. That's all I gotta say. This is just there's so many riots happening in the world these days. So, <laughs> so many riots. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, one. La- oh, I do have one last thing too because I saw this like picking or kicking around, and, and I don't know if you if you if you've heard this theory spiral as well. Um, it, it, that Victor. It, it was, since this was Victor's episode, close with this. Uh, think th- any chance you think he is going to end up being Victor's ass, the serial killer, uh, one of, as far as part of Batman's gal- Rogue Gallery? So, so I will be honest. Yeah. Because there was this little show called Gotham back in the day. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, and- Hot paws of a trash fire. Yep. Um, and actually, I think it went on for five or six seasons. Crazy. It did. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but there was a character called Victor Zaz. Victor Zaz. So I, so I, I kid you not. The first episode, as soon as he said, said his name was Victor, I'm thinking to myself, oh, so I, I wonder if this is gonna turn into like that other Victor that I vaguely remember. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i can totally see that yeah um happening i mean that that allows you to see an arc of an evolution i mean i people keep referencing breaking bad when they mm-hmm. do comparisons to the show and how especially this episode you got um walt and jesse and Vic me and jesse but I think I think if anything, Vic is Walt mm. because Vic, there was a chance, but the moment his pa- family was all stripped from him, like that, from literally having nothing, mm-hmm. and then to encounter someone who's like, "You want something? I can help you get what you want." Yeah, yeah. like it, it's just this. This weird um, mentorship that's occurring. So I don't know. Um, I think serial killer would take it a bit far, but I don't think it's I don't think it's an accident when when you have a character like when you're in Gotham 
and mm-hmm. people are named certain things, you know? Fair enough. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, cool. all right. Uh, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Friend us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome.